Okay, this is an interesting problem, number 14 on page 4. It's a little bit of a complicated problem. I wrote out the picture here for you. This is about heat capacity of water starting out here as ice at negative 15 degrees C. You add, um, you add temperature and heat. You add heat to it here as, uh, as you add heat to it. The temperature is going up. Fix the picture a little bit here. And it forms a little bit of a graph like this. The water goes from negative 15 degrees C and it heats up, heats up temperature changes until it gets to right here, which of course is zero degrees uh, Celsius at what point the temperature stops changing and it levels off. Now the reason for that is that at this point from negative 15 degrees C up to zero you're adding more and more kinetic energy to the system during this phase. When you get to here you stop adding kinetic energy and you start adding potential energy to the system What's really happening here is the ice is, is melting um, and, and uh, all along this time as you add heat to it and as long as the temperature is at zero, right now it's 100% ice there and here it will be 0% ice and it takes a little bit of time and it takes heat to do that. And then when you get to this point, now the ice is all melted and you're beginning to heat water all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. At that point the water is now boiling and all along through here the water is boiling, 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 boiling. Notice the temperature hasn't changed because just like down here as you heat the water you're adding more kinetic energy that's why the temperature is changing. But when you get to this point now you're breaking apart the water uh, bonds just like you're breaking apart the bonds here for ice breaking of bonds is actually adding potential energy and then uh, at this point all the water is boiled off and it starts to rise again as the steam begins to heat up and this problem is going from negative 15 degrees C all the way up to 110 degrees C so you've gone from cold cold ice up to hot hot steam all along the way you've got this various amount of energy that has to go into the system per gram of substance from ice up to up to uh, where it starts to melt you have to add 0.5 calories per gram per degree Kelvin and notice at this point degree Kelvin and degree Celsius won't make any difference because one degree change in Celsius is the same thing as one degree change in Kelvin so no problem don't have to even worry about Kelvin or Celsius at this point. Then as it's melting you have this other value called the enthalpy of fusion or heat of fusion which turns out to be 80 calories per gram that was given to us in this problem. And so we have to take that into account. They tell us to assume this amount here from when it's heating from negative 15 to zero, this amount for when it's going from zero to zero and starting to heat up the water. And as the water is heating up, we're going to use this amount as the specific heat capacity for water. By the time we get up to here, now we're breaking apart the bonds of the water and starting to vaporize it. That is going to be our delta H of vaporization, which is a huge amount of calories per gram. Notice how big that is. That's how much it takes to tear apart the water molecules from liquid to, to gas. And then once you've liberated it, now it's a gas, and now you're heating a gas, we're going to use the same specific heat capacity for water there as we had over here, just because the, the problem is telling us that's the value we should use. So really what this problem is, is adding up all of the different heats that are going on all these different times. So it looks like a terribly complicated problem, but if you just uh, work it out step by step, it's not too bad. 
So first of all, why don't we take a look at how much heat do we have to insert to get from this point right here to this point right there. Just that much. So now we have 10 degrees of ice and uh, we have to apply this formula here a little bit. The mass is 10, to 10 grams, 10 grams of ice. C at this point is going to be 0.5 calories. I'm going to leave off some units here just to keep it a little bit simpler. 10 times 0.5 and uh, it's going to be from negative 15 to 0. We're going to have a, a change in temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. So when you add those numbers up, you get a need for 75 calories to change the water from negative 15 up to zero. So keep that in mind, that's the first thing we had to figure out. Now let's take a look at from here to here. For this we have uh, to take into account for every gram we have to add 80 calories. We have uh, 10 grams so it's going to be 80 times 10 or it's going to take 800 calories. That was very easy to figure out to melt the ice to the point right there. Just 10 times 80. And then here we have to calculate from 0 to 100. That's the standard specific heat capacity of water, 1 calorie per gram per degree Kelvin, in which case we put it back into this formula. And uh, we have 10 grams. We're going to use 1.0 this time for our specific heat capacity and uh, we're going to change the temperature 100 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be basically 10 times 100. We're going to have to add 1000 calories to get the water from 0 to 100 degrees C. And now we're up to this point in the graph and we have to check out this part. This is our heat of vaporization. So for every gram we have to add 540 calories. Well that's easy to do. I can do that in my head. I'm going to multiply that by 10. So we have 10 times 540 which is going to be this right here 5,400 calories. Now we're at this point and the last here a half a calorie per gram per degree Kelvin which is similar to this right here Let's go back up here and apply that last part. We have uh, 10 grams times 0.5 and we're going to raise it from 100 to 110 so that's only 10 degrees. The very last part is only going to be adding 50 calories more. What this problem is really saying is you have to add up 50 calories and 75 calories and 800 calories and 1000 calories and 5,400 calories. When you add it all up, you get 7,325 calories total. And since you can see there is no answer that corresponds to that, but I do see that we have kilocalories. So noting that there are 1,000 calories and one kilocalorie, I note that that's going to move the decimal point over 3. So the answer is going to be 7.325 kilocalories. Which of course is selection C in the handout.